did all that uh, very, very unglamorous, tedious work, yeah. you know, that you have to do. Yeah. And it was it was great to see what was involved. And we, we had a bunch of people out there. And everybody who came into it with different views, everybody left moved by it and impacted by it um, that it was, uh, you know, in the – and in the 23 years I've been doing it, there's like the top five things in Duffy's Cuts, like in the top three of the top wow, five. Wow, that's awesome. Things that were interesting that were right outside the scope of what yeah, we yeah. do, but it was things that we weren't mandated to do, but we should have done. Oh, that's and, awesome. And there's another one that was right over there, which is weird. You're talking about coincidence. There was a, there was a, there was a kid that was, uh, that was, uh, he was dying and he was part of an Eagle Scout troop and we did this thing for uh, uh, Eagles get the uh, help him get his merit badge uh-huh. and uh, he was very young and because of what had happened to him and the surgeries he was very mature he was like a little mm. adult wow. and he was uh, it was it was weird because the um, we went and we helped him and he he, he died uh mm. And he was eight or nine years old. Oh, and, it was, and it was just, it was, I was saying that uh, there aren't many things. This is probably one of the things that I really feel that there was nothing better I could have done with this time than try and help him. Yeah. And it, 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 it was funny because we're standing there talking about it. And across the street was a sign for Duffy's Cut. Oh, isn't that crazy? And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I said, for something that's in one spot, that thing keeps popping up for some reason. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's... it's. No, we were very, very thankful that you guys came. I mean, those those dogs scented organic and in an area that, you know, we, we, we had no idea, you know, that there was anything there. And when we came upon that ash pit, there was this shape and the size of an unused human grave. There was stuff in there that was absolutely a century. And we got the first clay pipes. Pipes, yeah, I yeah. remember the pipes. And you know what came out of there was the, the oldest example of Irish nationalism in North America. It's the Aaron Gobrab flag pipe bowl intact with an Irish uh, harp. And it says flag of Ireland. It's the Aaron Gobrab flag, which is the first flag of Ireland. That came out of there. And then yeah, a stem that said dairy. Yeah, dairy. This is the only pipe stem that we found in the valley that has a city stamped on it. That was the port of departure for the ship John Stamp that carried the men over here to the to work in the valley. Isn't that crazy? And that's all significant it's stuff. Highly significant. Yeah, and then uh, what Context. was it? The, the museum in Ireland wants to yeah wants the, to borrow that. Yeah, the, there's a museum in the city of Derry slash London Derry that wants to borrow that pipe stem. Catholics will call it Derry, Protestants London Derry. It's called the uh, what's it called the Tower Museum, I think, that wants to borrow that. And we, we've sent them a, a contract. They just have to agree to it. And we'll let them have that for a year. Huh. But that's it, highly significant. This context, that's the kind of stuff that archaeologists dream of, you know. And, and, and there it was. And you guys were very integral in finding it. And, of course, the ash, the burning of stuff. You know, so why was there a grave here? And the actual graves were the first five and then we have another two that were slightly to the west were buried was like 20 feet away from there isn't that wild and your dog said it all that yeah you know you know and this this is uh, it's funny because it's been 15 years I I hadn't and and it was TJ telling me that you had come out with a second book Mm -hmm. and TJ uh like a giddy schoolgirl at a rock concert was waiting (laughs) for that book he got it delivered the first day and TJ doesn't pay next day for anything oh wow Ripped it open, uh, read through it, just devoured the book. He was he was on the phone. He was, and when I told him I was going to interview you, we hadn't worked out a date, and then we worked this date out due to your schedule. But he's not able to be here because if he was here, it, this would go a lot longer. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, got <laughs> we'll he do does want his book signed now. That's fine. He does want his book. No, I'll get signed. Frank out for that. He did. He did. Yeah. The, yeah. Frank handles the Jersey. Yeah. Part of Duffy's cut. Yeah. The, the, the Jersey Protestant part. You handle the PA Catholic. Yeah. There you go. That's <laughs> between a, between uh, the two of us, we got it all covered. The uh, how much? Uh, I mean, money's obviously an issue. Uh, that for for doing this right. Uh, how much? How much more time do you see yourself involved with it? 
or are you gonna? I think the rest of our lives are going to be involved in one yeah. way or another with with these with this grave and with the other ones. We we have another grave actually. This is a spinoff from this another Irish Rail crew at mile forty eight in Downingtown. Oh, um, two thousand and four. We got a a, a mail uh, item from a guy named Vance Usher, who was a CPA, and. Um, I think a little more than a CPA, you know, on the legal end of things, in Downingtown, who sent us a, a, a section of uh, Samuel Pennypacker's history of Downingtown that says that a, a railroad crew died in the cholera epidemic of 1830 out there, 1832 out there, and they were buried in a potter's field at what became, in 1872, Northwood Cemetery. And so we, so this is interesting because in one of the newspaper accounts from 1832 about Duffy's cut, the one that is supposedly the correction for the issue that's missing, you know, says, oh, that story was an exaggeration. There were only eight or nine who died of Duffy's cut. That's the guys we found in the coffins, of course, you know, that they couldn't deny died there because they were brought in publicly. Um, one of the guys ran down the tracks and infected another crew. That's in that 1832 newspaper piece. Oh. And so these two things came together, and our eyes opened up. Why? I said, my goodness, let's go talk to the people at Northwood. And we actually had an interest in working there earlier. We, we got permission in 06 to do something there that would, be, that would entail a ground-penetrating radar and core samples. But we couldn't do it until we reached a certain plateau at the cut. Now we're at a point at the cut where we can't go under the stone monument without a lot of assistance. We're going to need to try them at the second location. Yeah, we think we know where they are. It's a, the Potter's Field, according to the caretaker again, and Ron Seelan. We're meeting with him next week, actually, and the, and the cemetery board um, is a, a rectangular area. And Matt and I were there uh, in, a, in a documentary that came out from Sean Swords. Uh, Irish American Films did a piece called "The Cut." came out last year or the year yeah. before. Jumping and the men and women. Yeah. And, and so he and Matt and I are, are, are in, in Northwood in that one. None of the other documentaries have treated uh, Northwood yet. But you can see there's this area where there's graves all around it, and this is untouched. And the reason why it was untouched, according to the caretakers, that was the potter's field. That's where the guys are buried. So our, our geologist, Tim Bechtel, went out there. He'll be there at the meeting with the cemetery. He'll do the court, He'll do the uh, uh, the GPR and arrange cores with us. Um, he said, this is going to be a slam dunk compared to the cut, because this is untouched. This is not like layers of dirt piled in and stuff. You can see that this is no nice. slate. No slate to go yeah. to cut penetrate off of it. So we're not going to dig the bodies up there, but we're going to do cores and find that they're there, and then we'll try to get across there like we have for the burials at West Laurel. Wait a second. What am I... I've got, uh, I've got a dog that's going to retire soon, but he's better than any dog we had at Duffy's Cut. Wow. Whatever you want to... That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would do. That'd be awesome. Let's get the band back together. Let's do it. <laughs> Mark, that's a great idea. Fantastic idea. We'll get the band but back yeah, together. Blues Brothers <laughs> reference right there. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. No, because we could go and we could perk the ground like we did before. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And just run the dog. It's not invasive, that's not perfect. intrusive. That's perfect. Let's see what he does. That's perfect. I will, TJ will be happy to coordinate that. That'd be great. The uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, there's another one like this in Spring oh, let's City. Not go nuts. <laughs> there's one in Spring City that is a canal, an Irish canal worker's grave. They died of cholera. That was a potter's field in the middle of a Mennonite cemetery, East Vincent Mennonite Cemetery. Okay. We haven't contacted them yet, but that has graves, um, literally s completely surrounding that rectangle, uh, and they're facing in. And and so, and as northward they're facing down towards the, this Potter's Field, but below that is where the caretaker is. That's, that's just Pennsylvania. Like, yeah, he gets. He's been getting emails from people all over the country. Yeah, West that Virginia, that uh, Maryland, that uh, mass graves, Tennessee. There are other the Irish, uh, railroad, Irish or railroad mass railroad graves. Workers. Yeah, if we could ever do this full time, we would. I mean, yeah. we, we would have to get funding. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly. It's one of those passion projects. Yeah, you'll, you'll be homeless. Yeah, and, forget yeah. the Middle Ages. <laughs> I would do this. I, 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 I can't be homeless, but I, <laughs> I you know, it's. Seriously, you know, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that historians and archaeologists, because we, we can't do this without, without the help of archaeologists. You know, we were trained to do archaeology. Janet Monge down at Penn, her graduate assistant then, now a PhD in archaeology, Samantha Cox, ran the show when we got the bodies. She had excavated a lot of bodies. And she was younger than all of us. She was then um, going to go and do her master's in, in archaeology. Again, now she's got her PhD from Cambridge University. Oh. But she she's and she's excavated bodies in Europe and in the U.S. Um, extensive experience. We Whenever this thing moves and I hope it will move into going beyond Pennsylvania and doing this nationally. We have a team and 
you can be part of our team. We'd love to have you as part of our team. Yeah, that uh, I would. I would love to see that dog before he retires be involved in that. He wasn't. Yeah. I, he wasn't there the first time, but he is such a good cadaver dog. And Northwood man, Northwood. Yeah, we could. We could yeah. have that. Um, yeah. You know, that, <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Awesome. That would be. That would be yeah. great. And uh, TJ would love that. And uh, yeah. it's just. It's kind of discouraging, as you say this, that there's all these unmarked graves of Irish railroad workers scattering the country. It's crazy, isn't you it? Know? Yeah. We, you know, we've heard from people in the mainline area, you know, which is, you know, really rich neighborhoods, you know, uh, stretching, you know, from, you know, like Balakin, you know, there only are five out towards Immaculata. There's mass casualty sites all over there that they've wanted us to investigate that have nothing to do with the Irish but other groups the Radnor Paper Mill House on 252 before you get to Route 30 uh, it's a, it's a township owned property there were a group of Hungarian immigrants working there uh, making paper out of cloth you know they, they, the, the early methods in the early 20th century to make paper they took cloth and I, whatever they did with it to make it into paper uh, these guys got diphtheria and died they don't even know where they are buried but there's an enormous Enormous group of Hungarian immigrants buried there in this suburban piece of historic property. How many do you think? Uh, it could be as many as fifty. And 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 after that, an Italian immigrant crew working at a fireworks factory uh, in the vicinity of Devon and Wayne. It's called Westover Park now. It was an explosion, killed a group of Irish. I mean, excuse me, Italian immigrants around 1930. The, the other immigrant, the Hungarian uh, mass grave was from before World War I, so probably 1910, 1912 time frame. Uh, this one was 1930, Italian immigrants, and they were blown up and a large number of them died. I don't know how many there, but probably under under 20. But still, that's a lot of bodies. And and they, they hadn't done any work there. So they had us go out and look at it. These are just places we just had some of our crew go with, go with and, and look at. And in the case of Westover Park, Oh my God, Mark! There, this is a, now a, a bird sanctuary, but there were pieces of clothing. You could, we found the impact crater very easily. There were uh, there never been archaeologically investigated pieces of clothing, old shoes. I mean, old shoes. You know, nineteen thirties era, definitely uh, uh, time frame stuff. Sitting there uh, on the surface, it's absolutely. I think all. I think under the surface, everywhere. Everywhere you go, there are these mass cows. And I think that's the only explanation why human beings are so obsessed with the paranormal. I think that these things happen all around us, and there are echoes across time. Yeah, all these mass tragedies. I, I think I think there. I think you're totally right about that. I think that you know, and I say this about missing persons that there's probably within two miles of where anybody is sitting in this country, there's probably the body of someone who hasn't been claimed. You know, I don't know if yeah. it's. Uh, you know, fre fresh couple years or a couple decades, but there's somebody out there who's unknown. And, you know, this ties into, because one of the things I wanted to get is a piece of equipment, and we've used it a couple of times instead of being evasive, is ground penetrating radar. Yeah. I wanted to find out how to get a ground penetrating radar unit to help with stuff like that. And maybe by combining the two, I could find a way to get it justified and then... Um, we share it or something. Yeah, yeah a lot of uh, uh, what I've noticed is a lot of people think we're just we're just disturbing these peaceful graves, but a lot of it's a lot of it's just giving a par like a proper burial. Like we 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 caught some flack from certain groups about how like uh, we should just leave it alone and like it's something that we shouldn't mess with. And it, the analogy I give all the time is like it's like kind of like your relative being buried in a trash can. Like you wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want exactly. that to happen. You'd exactly. want a, uh, an actual marker or some type of significant, like they weren't forgotten. Yeah. Well, you want to know, you want to acknowledge, and you want to, you want to historically represent a property. Look at John Kennedy Jr. when he died. He went into a plane into the river, and we we spent the money, and we, we got his body out. They did mm -hmm. an autopsy, mm -hmm. and then we buried him back at sea. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. <laughs> you wow. know, and... That, that's yeah. kind of what you yeah 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 you just yeah. want to document absolutely so it's it's known absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. back to the history thing mm -hmm. we're forced to repeat it unless we understand it yeah exactly and it's a cover up yep it really is a cover up but yeah I will we will follow up on it that's definitely. awesome that's uh, awesome because it's now recorded. And there's no way I can get TJ to not follow up on this. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. So we'll make it happen. That's Thank great. you very much. That's awesome, Mark. And thank you for all that you do. 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, Thanks for having us. Thanks, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate uh, it. Thank All you. right. And thank you for carrying it on. <laughs> the uh, okay, Russell, hit the button.